ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد we begin by bearing witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is worthy of worship and unconditional obedience and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, our guide, our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, his family, his companions, and those that follow until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, it's no secret that if we look at the world today, it is full of ghulm, it's full of oppression, it's full of transgression. And if you look at any individual cause, then those who are the victims of that cause will say, well, we are the only ones that are being struck with this, but I, or we feel that way. We certainly feel like we're the only ones being struck with this. But at the same time, there will be another group of people that are also suffering dhulm, that would say, well, why are you just focusing on them? Why aren't you just focusing on us? We have more people that have been killed. We have more people that are under oppression. You look at Syria and you say, Oh, subhanAllah, what kind of oppression is this? The blessing of us being able to come to the masjid today. And the people of Syria cannot even go to the masjid without fearing that one of the troops of Bashar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do away with him, will come and stab them in the back, literally, while they are coming to pray have no safety for their families and children. But what about Afghanistan, where you had 16 civilians that were murdered brutally? What about Somalia, where you had thousands upon thousands in Kenya and Ethiopia that were murdered by the neglect of mankind? Without weapons, by utter neglect. Dhulm upon dhulm upon dhulm. What about Palestine? Is it just because it's been all of these years we've not forgotten and we'll wait for another Gaza to happen? Gaza's still happening. What about Pakistan? What about Shishan and the Muslims in Russia? What about the Muslims in China? Everywhere you look around the world, there's dhulm. There's oppression. There's transgression. And the first thing we do is we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift the aggression from our brothers and sisters who are suffering under oppression no matter where they are. And secondly, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to come and to pray in this masjid, to pray Salatul Jum'ah without fear. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing our sisters to wear hijab without having a police officer come and yank it off of them even though they're in a Muslim country. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the right of our children to live in safety, 
not having to worry about a member of the army coming and breaking down our door and humiliating us and raping our wives and killing our children. But with that thanks, there's Amana. And we look to the society that we live in today and the privileges that we enjoy they didn't come for free. There were people who suffered. We whine about TSA singling us out. We whine about the derogatory terms that are thrown at us in the media. We whine about sometimes being put through extra security checks. But there was a woman by the name of Rosa Parks that wasn't even allowed to sit on a certain seat on a bus and refused to tolerate that. And because of the struggle of women like Rosa Parks, because of the struggle like Garvey and Malcolm X, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Hajj Malik al-Shabazz, and Martin Luther King, one minority took the brunt of most of the oppression of this country. And because of that, here we are, mashallah. Here we are able to live this way. Here we are being able to take people to court if they defame us. And yes, the legal system is not perfect. And we're seeing the results of that right now. Racism is not out of this country. It hasn't been taken out of this country. It still exists. And if you haven't seen the bumper sticker, there are bumper stickers outside on some people's car that say 2012, don't rehave. And that's acceptable. And even if you don't agree with President Obama's policies, and I certainly don't, I take offense to them. And there is the killing of Trayvon Martin, which has dominated the media. A young man who was wearing a hoodie, who had a pack of Skittles and an iced tea in his hand, and was killed because he was in a neighborhood that one man didn't feel like he was entitled to be in. And some people would say, well, maybe he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. If you're like Geraldo and I'm sure, Geraldo from Mox News, I'm sure we have many people in our Muslim community that feel this way. He said he should have left his hoodie at home. He looks suspicious. But dear brothers and sisters, before we can talk about how messed up the world is and how messed up the community outside of the Muslim community is, I want to ask you a question. If Trayvon was Muslim and he walked into the masjid dressed the way he was, how would you feel about him? If he walked into the masjid and there happened to be two dollars that were stolen or that went missing, who would be the first person that would be suspected of stealing? If he walked up to you and he was a Muslim, and he said, I, I would like to propose to your daughter. What would we say to him? And I want us to look deeply at our community for a moment here. With a critical eye. And let's be honest. Everyone claims that they're, well, most people would claim that they're not a racist. And I hope that all of us would make that claim. All of us would have the decency to at least admit racism is wrong. But in our everyday lives, in the way we treat our Muslim brothers and sisters, in the way we stereotype, can we truly make that claim? I'm not a racist, but I still find it okay to say words like abad and qallu. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because everyone's a slave of Allah. So it's okay to say the word slave. But if there is a brother, an African American brother who actually understands what I'm saying, I'll be too shy to say it in front of him. But there's still nothing wrong with that because you know what? Everyone is a slave of Allah. There's nothing wrong with what you said. But Abu Dhab said to Bilal, may Allah be pleased with them both, Ya Ibn Sauda, O son of a black woman. He didn't say anything wrong. Bilal was black and he was the son of a black woman. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu, Abu Dhab, you have in you some traits of jahiliya, some of the leftovers of the pre-Islamic era. Not that you're ignorant, that there is some leftover from pre-Islam in you. But at least Abu Dhar was man enough to admit it and that's why he's a great Sahabi and take account for his actions and go to Bilal and put his face in the dirt and say, step on my face, put me back in my place. Well, we would say there's nothing wrong with that. People have left Islam because they came into the masjid and they heard those words being used and they knew what it meant. There was a student at the University of Medina who left Islam because he heard the Shaykh using those words. But it's okay, we're not saying anything wrong. It's not about what you said, it's about the perception. You hurt your brother. And all the categories that that just fell into. As-Sukhriya. La yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Asa an yakunu khayran minhum. Let not a single one of you mock, make a mockery of another group of people or another person because they might be better than you. Back 
fighting because you hurt a brother, that you would never say that to his face if you knew what it meant. You would never walk up to a brother, to an African American brother, and say, hey slave, what's going on? He's a slave of Allah just as you are. You would never do that. So it's backbiting too. I'm not a racist, but you know what? Everyone from Pakistan is like this, and everyone from Palestine is like this, and everyone from this country is like this. No, if you meet a Bangladeshi brother, if you meet an Egyptian brother, if you meet this person, they're like this. They have this trait inside of them. Now you've delved into aqidah. You just accused Allah of being unjust. Because if everyone was different, and if people were born with negative traits and characteristics, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be just when He says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people. He would have to say, Ya ayyuhal arab, Ya ayyuhal ajam, Ya ayyuhal zanoon. He would have to specify races if they were all different. It wouldn't be fair anymore. You just accuse Allah of injustice. That's not from us. You just accused the Prophet of just trying to have good PR, public relations, when he said there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, or a non-Arab over an Arab. You just accused him وسلم. But in fact, as we know, as Ibn Khaldun said, it's the circumstances, everything from the weather to where that person was born, to all of the impacts of society upon that person that shaped him, his financial circumstances. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create me better than you because my parents are Palestinian, or did not create you better than me because you're from India. We're all the same. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. I'm not a racist. But if someone comes asking for my daughter, <laughs> I don't care what kind of deen and khuluq he has. Rasulullah said, If someone comes to you with pleasing religion and pleasing character, you better marry your daughter to him. You have no right to say no. But then you say, no, no, no. They're Desi. They're Arab. I'm not going to let my daughter marry a Pakistani. I can't let that happen. No, he's an American. I don't care if he's a graduate from the Islamic University of Medina. He's an African American. He'll probably turn away. He probably wants something out of this. No, I'm sorry. You have to marry someone from our Qabila, from our tribe. And you know what ends up happening, dear brothers and sisters? The realization of the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, that there would be much fitna and fasad, corruption and trial and tribulation. Because then your daughter ends up marrying someone with no deen and no khuluq and still not from the race that you wanted. But who started that fitna? I'm not a racist, but you know, if someone walks in and he's from this country, I don't want him to be the Imam. I don't want him to lead the Salah. I don't trust his knowledge. He doesn't have fitrah. He was raised in an environment that says this and this and this and that. He doesn't understand Islam properly because he's not one of us. When Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu got on the Kaaba, and yes, you know what? Bilal's tajweed wasn't perfect either radiallahu anhu. What did they say? Abd al-Aswad yamtaqi al-Kaaba. A black slave who stands on the roof of the Kaaba. The same thing. But I'm not a racist. And it's ironic because in the practical aspects of our lives, all of a sudden we separate ourselves and we say, you know what? I'm not a racist. But in the same ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verse that you have on every single wedding invitation, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِهِ قَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ That from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He created for you spouses from yourself so that you may dwell in tranquility with one another and place between you mercy and compassion. And there, that is a sign for those who think, you know, the pretty ayah that even the most secular wedding will have recited at the beginning and have on the invitation. What was the ayah before and what was the ayah after? وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ From the signs of Allah is that He created you from dirt. You, me, the African-American brother, the Pakistani brother, the Indian brother, the Turkish brother, the Palestinian brother, the Egyptian brother. You were created from dirt and I was created from dirt. And that's not enough. The ayah that comes after. 
ومن آياته خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم إن في ذلك آيات للعالمين. And from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala is your is, is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the difference in your language and in your skin color. Barely in that is a sign for those who have knowledge. Al alimin, those who are in ignorance. Those who are in ignorance. These are the two ayat that come next to the marriage one. And you know what? The one in Surah Al-Qurrah. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakrin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'udan wa qada'ila li ta'arafu. O people, we have created you, male and female, nations and tribes, so that you may get to know one another. We all talk about how beautiful that ayah is. Why don't you go two ayahs before it where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids you from mocking your brother? or from mocking a group of people. Allah Azza wa Jalla did not create anyone less because of his race. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make you superior because of your race. And had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in you traits because of your race, then that is an accusation against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is unjust. But Allah Azza wa Jalla is not unjust with his servants, it is us who are unjust with one another. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings, to guide us to the straight path, to eliminate the things, the traces of jahiliya that we find in ourselves and our communities. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us acceptable in His sight and beloved to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qabihada wa astaghfirullahi wa kumisa'il muslimin astaghfiru innahu wa al-wafur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عبوان إلا على الظالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear brothers and sisters, I ask you again What if Trayvon was a Muslim and he walked in the masjid? What would be your attitude towards him? And how would we treat him? And how would we look at him? And I want you to really think about this. If someone wants to say to me, there is nothing wrong with saying Abd bin Qallu, I'm telling you it's haram to say so. Because it hurts your brother. If someone comes to me and says to me that you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people have been given so many opportunities, minority rights, they can do so much, why don't they do anything? Then why don't you try saving them instead of us, the Muslims, being in those neighborhoods and selling the drugs that keep those people subdued? The people that we're supposed to save, the people that we're not supposed to judge, the people that, that we are supposed to be towards, non-Muslims as a whole, du'a, not du'a, du'a, calling them to Islam, not judges, and we degrade them. And we say that they were born like that. And we say they have this characteristic, and this characteristic, and this characteristic. And we wonder why as a Muslim community we get no respect. Because we don't respect one another. So we can't cry about others stereotyping us and others being racist towards us. So long as we are racist towards one another, it's not going to change. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna Allah la yughayyu ma bi qawmin, hatta yughayyu ma bi anfusin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of a people until they change that which is within themselves. Unless we respect each other, unless we treat everyone else like dignified human beings, and do not accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of being unjust, and do not think of ourselves being better than others, and respect the knowledge of whoever the person is, regardless of his race, and accept the person in our families. You know, it's one thing to talk, oh, Bilal, we can name our children after him. But look what Umar bin Khattab who calls him our master. Not only did he not call him Abd, our master, our Mawla, who was freed by our master Abu Bakr al-Siddiq Not only did they say, oh, Bilal has a lofty position in Islam. Look, he does a on the Kaaba. That's good PR. Let people say Islam is not a racist religion. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf Society and the richest man in this society pursued Bilal to marry into his family. The Sahaba lived it. They didn't just talk it. 
So when the Arab, Pakistani, Indian, Turkish, black, white ends, inshallah ta'ala, the terrorists will end. And that will stop too. But let's not teach that garbage to our children. Let's not teach our garbage to our children and allow that to continue. And allow our children to use those same words and to act in the same manner that we acted as. And if you didn't know before, dear brothers and sisters, I only ask you to stop now. Watch yourself. Watch yourself in your comments. Because you really might hurt somebody. You might run someone away from Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the sins that we commit knowingly and unknowingly, the small ones and the large ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish justice in this society and make us bearers of mercy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish justice all around the world. We ask Allah to free our brothers and sisters in Syria, in Palestine, in Afghanistan, and all over the world from the oppression that they face. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the for our brothers and sisters in Somalia and Pakistan and wherever they are in the world and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us a people who have come out of their role but to make us slaves and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all together who recognize that we have been created as human beings and as forgetful people and the only way we attain success is through being reminded and drawn closer to Allah Azza wa Jal Allahumma khibr al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat يا إنهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربنا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر المصطفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر اللهم انصر المستضعفين في الشام اللهم انصر المستضعفين في الشام اللهم انصرهم في أفغانستان اللهم انصرهم في كل مكان اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بعد الإحسان وإيتاء للقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعبكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله الله يذكركم واشكروه على الاعمال يزلكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيموا الصلاه